Hey guys, Captain Zach here. You know, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about how to rig up a, uh, a grub on a jig head. So I thought I'd take just a couple of minutes and do a quick how-to on, uh, on my recommended approach. So I'm, I'm by no means suggesting that this is the only way to do it or the perfect way to do it. Uh, it's certainly a, a proven way to do it that I, that I employ every time I use a grub. So I just want to sort of pass along this knowledge if, if folks have gone through the effort of like getting these jigs, being out in a boat, finding the halibut grounds, finally getting on a hot bite, and then suddenly all you need to do is have the sort of the jig and grub work in tandem to get that big bite. So when I think about rigging up a, a grub on a jig head, there's really three key things to consider. One is the direction, two is the hook clearance, and then three is the tail check. So I'll go through these in detail just to show you what I, what I mean by that. So first is the tail direction. Um, for, for an example purpose here, I've got a 16 ounce fire eye glow jig and then the, uh, the corresponding grub that I sell with that. Obviously these are the larger ones, but the same uh, approach applies to both like a seven ounce jig or even the smaller jigs, the one ounce with the smaller grubs as well. So, you know, so these, these uh, tips do apply to the smaller ones as well. But well, when you're thinking about direction, obviously there's like, there's two key choices. You could have it go uh, sort of towards your bait and towards the barb of the hook uh, or away. And, and my strong recommendation is that you, is that you rig it away from, from the action. So just to, to be dramatic here, I prefer the, the grub to actually spin this way, away from the, uh, the barb of the hook, the shank of the hook, away from any uh, bait that you have here. You might have a strip of salmon belly or a strip of octopus. You might have some chunks of herring. Um, you don't want this grub to be interfering with potentially the action of the, the strips fluttering in the, uh, in the current. And then you also don't want it to get in the way of a, of a hook set. So that'll, that'll really bring me to my, to my second point around hook clearance. So now that we've determined the direction of the grub that we want it to go sort of opposite of the bend of the hook, the next point is around hook clearance. And this is a really important point because I think a lot of folks uh, don't quite get this one right and it could cost them dearly. It could cost the fish of a lifetime, really. Um, the idea here is that for a fish to get hooked, uh, a halibut in particular, there has to be some space at the at the bend of the hook so that the fish's mouth can actually kind of penetrate down and then for the barb to do its job. If the if the bend of the hook is cluttered up too much with a grub, let's just say like this, and then also a, uh, a piece of bait, like a strip of herring or a uh, salmon belly or something like that, suddenly the whole hook's gonna get filled up. Once you finally get that bite you've been waiting for, the fish isn't really going to be able to get hooked correctly. They're going to bite it. It's not going to set. And then they'll shake a couple of times and then they'll pop off and you'll pull it up and you'll have a, the bend of the hook filled with either your grub or your bait and you'll have no fish. And that's a really disappointing outcome. So let's talk about how we avoid that. You know, with a grub, it's important to note that the grub's likely not the only thing that's gonna be on your hook. So sometimes I really do like fishing just a, a grub on a jig and you can fish that sort of aggressively up and down, um, just flutters just effortlessly in the, uh, in the current. But sometimes you might wanna have bait on there as well. And if you do have bait, like I said, a strip of octopus or something, you need to account for that when you put the grub on. Because once you do the grub plus the bait, there's a real chance that you're gonna to start to fill up that bend of the hook and then potentially miss a fish. So, so what I like to do is if you take a look, you can see these little, little grooves here. Um, ideally, you're going to just sort of thread the grub on, but instead of coming all the way to the bottom, what I like to do is I, I actually, I'm going to aim to have the hook come out on the third groove up, right like that. The goal here is so that the, you know, the grub will sit in here, but then the tail will actually sit back a little bit away from the action. So that tail is not going to start messing with your, um, whatever you have it tipped with, the tail is not going to get in the way of, uh, of the bite, etc. So, so here's what I'll do again, the aiming at that third groove here. So I'm going to be coming through and trying to get it to come out right there. But what I'll do is I'll insert the tip of this razor sharp hook right into the back of the grub. And the point is here, you just want to, you want to thread it right through the middle. So it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. I know you, you might be a little left or a little right, but really use your fingers and try to, you know, try to get it kind of right down the, down the center. 
And you'll see these grubs actually have a, a there's a center line. So that's actually a nice uh, mechanism where you can kind of aim for on the third groove up, right at that center line, you know that you'll be in, uh, in good shape. So there we are. As you can see, I'm just kind of feeding it up here. As you do feed it up, go ahead and make sure you, you take the skirt and, and evenly distribute it. You don't want the skirt to get caught on any one side of the grub. So there we are. So now we can kind of push the, push the grub up, really right up against the, the jig here. You know, there's a nice surface here for that grub to, to sit against. And you'll see one, two, three, the third, uh, the third groove, if you will, is where that hook came out. And now, now that grub sits nice and away from the bend of the hook. So you know it's not gonna be blocking all your, uh, the action spot where you need to hook the fish with. And it does still give you some space if you wanted to put in, uh, you know, a strip of salmon belly or something like that, or even some herring or both. Uh, then this will allow for that bait to sit here and you'll still have enough hook clearance to uh, to set that set that hook and catch that fish. Now the final consideration, this might seem like a, uh, like a simple idea, but it's a tail check. So when you're jigging uh, up and down, you know, you're constantly kind of moving that, this tail is just working hard to get you a bite. That tail is just fluttering in the current and every time you're lifting it up, it's going nuts. So every so often, a fish will grab at your jig and end up just grabbing the tail. And then in your excitement, you'll probably yank. And I'm, that's the right approach. Whenever something stops that jig, you reel down, feel some weight and yank. However, sometimes if all they've got is the tail, there's a chance they'll rip it off. And so the last point here is around doing a tail check. So when you reel that, that, uh, this jig up with a grub, and if you see that the tail uh, has, uh, has been bitten off, go ahead and replace it. Uh, a new grub is a really small price to pay for catching like the halibut of a lifetime. And often some people don't think to check it either. So, you know, every time you reel it up, just do a quick, just a quick check to make sure you've got the full tail there. Uh, so often it's the case that if, um, if they do end up biting the tail off, they're not gonna bite it all off right that, like that every time. Sometimes they'll, they'll, like, they'll grab it right there and you'll have half a tail. And, and, and it's so easy to say, well, that half a tail is probably good enough. But if you really want to maximize your chance, pull it off and put a new one on. A whole tail is probably going to give you better action than the half a tail. So, so keep an eye out, do those tail checks, um, and then you should be in, uh, in good shape. So once again, you know, the three ways to make sure you got that grub right. The direction, make sure you got that, um, that grub pointed opposite the bend of the hook. The hook clearance, so make sure that it's tucked back like this so you've got plenty of gap to really set the hook or accommodate whatever other bait you're running there. And then finally, it's the tail check. It's all about just making sure nothing bit off your tail and that you're getting the best action you can. So give that a try next time and, uh, and good luck out there on the halibut grounds.